Okay, so we've looked through the data, um, downloaded it, looked through it, seems to be okay. Before we begin to do some of the analysis on it, we need to check the reliability of the scales and create the scales. Um, in other words, sum or uh, create an average across the items. And we can do all that in SPSS, so we'll go and do that now. But it does require to understand the scoring key. So I'll do a talk a little bit about that as we go through as well. So here's the data, um, the, the data that has been now sort of cleaned up. Um, so if I look at this first scale, the MLQ, um, I, I, it uh, all looks okay. I can, sometimes it's useful just to run some descriptives on each of the items, just to check that they all seem okay. Um, so I'm just going to do that. So I'm just gonna highlight the MLQ um, variables just click on them and just look at a minimum, maximum, and mean for each of the items. Um, so we're just, these are the item level. Um, and this is just to sort of sense that it's all looking okay. So minimum one, maximum seven, that's really what we want on a seven point scale. Again, we can do that for those converted ones, which um, just checks whether they're back in the right scale, which I'll do in a second. Um, Mean is about middle of the scale, so there's not a sort of high level of uh, um, ceiling effect or a low level of floor effect. Everybody scoring ones, everybody scoring um, sevens. As you can see here, you know, although I've got about a thousand in my sample, um, depending on the item, so some of those items, 743 people have completed, some of them 745, some of them 744. So don't worry, that's, you know, we, that is the nature of data collection. People are allowed ethically not to answer any question. Don't get worried that some people haven't answered single questions. We will be creating a mean scale. So actually it won't really matter too much if they didn't answer all of the questions. So even though individual questions may not have been answered, we're gonna create an average score so across the scale, hopefully most of the questions have been answered um, and, and, and the average will be fine and, and unaffected. There are ways of imputing and working out missing data. There's lots of missing data analysis, but for the sake of um, master's projects, generally creating an average across the scale is usually sufficient. So these are all, I'm just flicking down here, fours, fives, looking at my means, one and seven, that's all looking fine. Um, a slightly lower score on that one. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. That all looks pretty good. I could um, do the same thing by just looking at um, a histogram and I could look at the spread of scores across those items just to check that it all um, looks okay. So again, if I just do this, I'll just give you an example on the first one. Um, so I could just do a little bit of descriptive looking at um, the spread of scores in the items. But, but really, I'm not interested in the items. It is the we're going to create a scale from those items. So uh, it's a scale score that's more interesting if we're looking at things like normal distribution. But if we look at the item level, you know, that looks a pretty normal distribution to me. So what I want to do is create a, a, a look at the reliability of that. But before we do that, we need to look if there's any reverse codings. So this is, um, if we look at uh, this scale, that's the meaning in life questionnaire. Um, if I look at my uh, scale um, scoring key. I've got the scale here. Um, I've got the, the 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 anchor points and the points that they are, and I've got the items. But it doesn't tell me whether anything's reversed items. Now, actually, that's kind of on purpose for this activity. If you look on here, I've got some reversed items here. They're not included. So, and you may not have exactly the scale score. So, we sometimes, you know, if you haven't, it's just showing you. It's really worth sometimes um, going back to the uh, original questionnaire where where that came from so so here this is the original questionnaire you won't be able to read it um so that's the questionnaire so if again if i look here um this is the scale meaning in life questionnaire from the journal of counseling psychology um and so i've I'm, i've identified it here i've gone to the library searched for it got the scale opened it now this one happens to have at the end here um the the items um, and the scoring key um, and it says here there's a syntax to create these it's not exactly syntax but um, there's subscales and it says one four five so there's two subscales if you want to have those subscales I'm actually just gonna have a single scale you don't need the subscales for the purpose of this I'll just have a single scale but I will talk about subscales in a minute um, but it says 
item nine is reverse coded. So we need to make sure we do that first. And so if actually, if I look at the items, I can see here, item nine is this one, my knife life has no clear purpose. That seems to be the opposite scoring to, I understand life's meaning, good sense of purpose, um, what makes my life meaningful. So for this question, question nine, we need to reverse code. Anybody who scores high on that, mostly true, should score low in meaning of life. Okay, so a high score on my life has no clear purpose is a low score in meaning of life. So we just do a reverse coding. So how do we do that? Well, we do it exactly the same as we did with the recoding of the scores. So we transform the data, recode into a different variable. So this time we're taking the MLQ9, and that's the only one we're interested in. MLQ9, and I always recode it into a new variable, and I always use the same system, which is I put a small r after the end of the variable name. Um, so in this case, MLQ9 is going to become MLQ9R, which is a recoded. So in MLQ, um, oops, let's just uh, let's reset this. It's one from my last one. Uh, MLQ9, MLQ9. R. So I know that the values one should really be seven. So if somebody scores low on that, it's actually got a high meaning of life. And, and as we go through, two should be six, three should be um, five, four stays the same, etc., etc. So I'll just do that quickly in here. My old and new values one is going to become seven, two is going to become six, three is going to become five. Value of four stays the same. Five, we need to go all the way through, becomes three. Six becomes two. And seven becomes one. Okay, so we've recoded, reversed, scored that item. I'm going to continue. Let's make sure we change that so it tells me which one. And I'm just going to paste this because I like to have the syntax record of all of the things that I've done. So I'm pasting that so you can see now on my little syntax file, I've done those bits before. Um, and now I've got this, this recoding. Again, if I want to keep a record of this, a note um, below is the rescoring of item nine on the MLQ, as this is reverse scored. So that just tells me that I need to actually do it. So I'll highlight it, click on run. So what that should tell me is at the end of my data, I now have a recoded score. Okay, it exists at the end, it doesn't really matter where it is. I could move that if you wanted uh, the, the variable to be moved up. I could just slide that up to where it would be in the right place. But for the purposes of the moment, it doesn't really matter. So now that's that's questionnaire is scored in the right way. Every item is scored correctly. So we need to look at the reliability of that scale. Is it a reliable scale? Now there are two subscales, but I'm going to be interested just overall in the meaning of uh, uh, meaning in life. So a single score, which is uh, says it's okay to do in the um, in the paper, um, but you might have two subscales. So I'm, but I'm just going to look at the overall score. So in this case, I'm going to look at a Cronbach Alpha reliability. So I'm going to go to analyze. And I'm going to go down to scale reliability analysis. So as you can see, I've, I've looked at this before, but if I just show you here, so I'm going to put in one to 10, but I don't actually want question nine. I'm going to take that out because for question nine, it's the other way around. So I'm going to add my reversed scored question nine here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just to put it in order for aesthetic sake, 10. So these are all my uh, reliability. Now, we don't necessarily need to include any other statistics. We can just click on the alpha, but I always like to include scale if item deleted. That tells me if any of the items themselves are a bit rogue um, and maybe the reliability would have improved if I got rid of that item because it didn't quite work in the same way. So um, I'm just going to click on continue and click on OK because it does alpha. There are other sorts of reliability, but we're looking at Cronbach's alpha here. Click on OK. So. The one I'm most interested in is this second one, reliability statistics. So this tells me how much data I've got. You now I've got quite a bit of the data, 70% of the data is included. So people have got those scores. Um, and the Cronbach's alpha here is 0.73. So yippee, all totally fine. Don't really need anything else on that. Um, if that was a bit low, 
it was 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, 0 0.65, whatever, I'm, I might begin to look at this score here. This is my scale if item deleted. So you can see here, this tells me if I deleted this item, what would the reliability then be? So this actually, if I deleted this item, it would go down. This one would go down, this one would go down. So they mostly go down. Um, uh, this one would go up a bit. That's classic for reverse scoring. They're always going to make it, but that doesn't matter. 0.7 is all I'm interested in. So it doesn't. I'm not interested in the difference between 0 0.730 and 0 0.737. It's making very little difference. And actually, I prefer to have a reverse scored item in it than not. Um, so these don't really make a difference. But if, if your reliability is low, look down this list and see if there's any kind of unusual item that might be um, causing your score to be too low. And if you deleted it, the score would go up. Be mindful also that sometimes this can flag up when there's reverse scored items that you haven't reverse scored or haven't included correctly because they're negatively related or they have some unusual relationship. So that's a useful column to look at. But this is what I would report in my final document. The, you know, we looked at meaning in life. The scale was reliable, 0 0.730. I could, um, if I wanted to, go down to these subscales, one, four, five, six, and nine. So and look at my subscale reliability. So that's one four, five, six, and nine. So just do this. Rude people phoning me while I'm doing a video. Right, um, one, four, five, six, and nine, and I can do the same. So this is fine, this is good. 0.871, again, really high reliability. So if I wanted to do a subscale for this, I could. And then the second subscale is for search, two, three, seven, eight, and 10. So again, I'm just going to look at my reliability here. Um, so two, three, eight, ten. What was it? Two, three, seven, eight, and ten. Put that in there. So let's get rid of these ones. Two, three, seven, eight, and ten. Run that again. Uh, two, three, seven, eight, and ten. Again, good. So the subscales are even better because sometimes they're more focused on a particular issue, so there's less variability. So I've got reliable, both subscales are reliable, but also the scale overall is reliable. So depending on what I want to do with this, if I wanted to treat the subscale separately, um, that would be fine. If I wanted to look at it overall, that's fine too. It depends, again, how the constructs used in the data that you're using. You know, Are you going to treat those things separately? Um, are you going to look at vigor and absorption? Or are you going to look at engagement overall? You get the idea. So so, so um, that's shown me that they're good. So what I need to do now is create some scales. So that looks good. So what I'm now going to do is say it's OK to create a scale. So I'm going to compute a new scale. So now I'm going to take um, the scale. So I'm going to look here is going to be my um, meaning. I'm going to give it a name. This is the name of the variable. This is going to be the key variable that I'm going to use. So what I want to do is create an, a, a mean score. So if I click here, so it says create this new variable called meaning, click across to what do I want, how do I want to create this? So I'm just going to click across to all, and then I'm going to go down and find mean. So down here, I have <clears throat> look for mean. So what I do at this point is I pop this by clicking this up arrow into the box here. It says create mean score, and it's got some question marks. It says, what do you want to put in those boxes? Well, what I want to put is actually the variables. Um, so this time, I want to put the mean of everything. Okay, so MLQ1, MLQ2, comma, MLQ3, comma, MLQ4, comma, MLQ5, comma, MLQ6, comma, MLQ7, comma, MLQ8, comma, not MLQ9, because that's to be the reversed item. So I'm going to put the MLQ9R, comma, comma, and then the MLQ10. So this is going to be my meaning in life, or however I want to, I could even call it meaning in life scale. And it's going to be the mean of all of these items. Again, I like keeping a record. So I could click on OK at this point, and it would do it. And I'm going to click on Paste. So that now puts it in my syntax file. So this tells me to, this is my um, uh, meaning in life scale. So see that. But what I can also do now I'm in syntax, I want to produce those subscales. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, so I'm just going to copy that, highlight it. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put MIL presence. 
and then I'm going to do the same one. And the second subscale, if I get the terminology correctly, is search. So this one is now search. First one had one, four, five, six, and nine reverse coded. One, four, five, six, nine reverse coded. And the second one has everything else, which is two, three, not four, five, seven, no, two, three, let me get this right, seven, eight, and ten. And I've looked at reliability, they're all good. So again, I just want to run these now. It's going to create a new variable column. So everybody's now going to get a meaning in life score. And then the, this one here, presence, is going to get them a presence score and a search score. So I'm just going to highlight that, click on that. That all looks good. If I look at my data now. So for every participant, they should have a meaning in life scale um, score. So if I go to the very end of my their, each of their, their, their datas, you can see this is their mean score on meaning in life. If I go back to my syntax, I'm now going to do the same for this. Be even lazy and just highlight both of them together. And it's going to run both of those things together. So now for each participant, they have a meaning in life, a presence, and a search. Okay, so these are the subscales of the ML. So I could, if I wanted, I could just call give them a variable label, which is useful. And then MIL presence, and then MIL search. Time to save. So you can see here, I've looked at the reliability, I've recoded, and I've created a scale score. Now all I need to do is go and do the same for all of my other variables. So what I'm gonna end up with is at the bottom here, the scale scores for each of my variables. And then we know which is gonna be the next video.